what is up? I wasn't sure if I was going to film this because I couldn't find my camera, but I'm starting filming it with my phone and then hopefully I'll find my camera and I can pick it up. So, I live in Japan now. <laughs> I haven't updated anyone on the vlog since I moved here or maybe even saying that I was going to move here, but basically I packed everything up from the shop, sold the majority of the stuff except for the tools that I wanted to keep and have moved to Japan. I've recently bought a house here in Japan in a little town called Ono, which is north of Kobe, which is just west of Osaka. Um, so I'm kind of nice and central to all the tracks that I like to drive um, or have driven in the past, but not too much. I um, don't want to sound like a seasoned veteran here. I literally haven't driven a track in my own car at all. So yes. Uh, I have recently purchased a 180. Um, it has heaps of blow-by. Uh, so I have uh, bought a motor from UpGarage. Uh, stoked that I had one and I'm just gonna basically yank the motor out of the car, put the other motor in and then I'll refresh the motor that came out of the car and then I'll wait for the other one to get lazy and then I'll swap it over. So throw the camera around, you guys can see what's going on. This is the WEP. It's in hovercraft mode at the moment because I'm about to yank everything apart, but it's basically a completely stock engine bay. Uh, it looks like it has some form of bigger turbo on it, but I won't know until I yank it out. Um, huge amount of blow by. It's got coilovers in it and some adjustable front caster arms. All the rear arms are standard. Uh, it's got some cool little P1 buddy clubs on it. It's still four stud. Uh, standard knuckle, standard LCA, standard all the suspension set up except for coilovers and front caster arms. Um, doesn't have a cage, but I have found a cage, a cheap cheap enough cage at an up garage, it's just a half cage that I want to put in it. Came with a cool little old school seat. Um, yeah, this is it. So I'm going to get everything ready to pull out. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring my engine crane to Japan because I'm not packing my car or any of my tools until uh, April, sort of late April, because I'm going back to Australia in uh, on the 7th, and then I will basically sell my 34, sell a bunch of my other stuff that I still have there, then pack my S14 into a container and send that here with all of my tools, um, and then hopefully just live here full time from then on. This is a cool little motor I got from Up Garage. It's adorable. Cool that it came on this little stand. So yeah, I'll start yanking all this apart and we can uh, run along for the process. Hope everyone's well and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, almost done. Um, I've got everything undone on the cold side, which is good. Give you a little sneak peek. Everything's undone on the cold side. On the hot side, everything is undone bar the power steering lines because I only bought this small little toolbox and it doesn't have a half drive socket set in it. I need 24 mil to undo that and then that bolt there as well for the Hikus. And then I just need to undo the two 12 mils down there. That way, let's get a little zooming going. Down there, you see those Johnnies? Yeah, need to undo those. That's for the aircon. And then basically you just need to undo the dump pipe underneath the car um, as well as take the tail shaft out and drop the gearbox down and then I've got to take the slave cylinder off the side of the box and then it's good to go. All right, let's go get some tools. All right, Nintendo to get this socket. I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy a socket set with a ratchet in it or just the socket. Let's see how expensive things are. Decided I'm gonna go with a little ratchet, sorry, socket set because a singular socket's 10 bucks, 11 bucks. And this set's 22, I'll show you. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I was like, should I get a ratchet? The cheapest ratchet they got is 22 bucks. So what I'm gonna do is I bought a breaker bar and a 32 mil because I planned to break shafts here because I always do that. Um, so I have a big breaker bar and I have an extension. So I'm just gonna crack it with that and then stick the rattle gun on there and then just you know, yank it out. All right. Now I need to quickly rush home, pick up my truck, drive to um, Alpha Imports Toshi's. He's got an engine crane that I can use, thank you. I'm gonna go grab that now, eat some dinner, and then go back home and keep Homer's motor out. See you soon. 
Okay, good news. I found my camera. So, just went to Toshi's, picked up the engine crane. Thanks heaps, Kevin, for waiting around for me to pick it up. Um, went to Joyful, ate some dinner. It was delicious. Now I'm back at the shop. I've just put the tarp on the ground so I can get under there to drain the gearbox oil and then take the tail shaft out. Then I'm going to drop the back of the box down. Actually, I need to take the shift around. I don't have circlip pliers, mother... Yeah, see, things you don't have when you move countries, dickhead. Uh, so I'm going to have to work out how to get that out. And then I'm going to drop the back of the box down, take the slave cylinder off, and then undo the 14mm engine mounts from the bottom is the way I like to do it. And that should be good to go. All right. Let's keep going. Okay, I think we're ready to pull the motor out. Gotten underneath the car, taking the tail shaft down, and on the gearbox cross member, taking the slave cylinder off. And then I've just taken the aircon lines off. There was gas in there, so a little bit deboed, but it's okay. And then I've just gotten the power steering lines off. Just chained up the motor. It's ready to come out. Set up the engine crane, and we'll get this dog out of the car. Well, that's an issue. And even when I were ejected up from and had the pressure I just dug a big hole in the ground. This concrete must be incredibly thin. Alright, I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna get that out, but we'll see how we go. Alright. Where does that look how cute this little dump pipe is? It's adorable. It's maybe two inches. So, the engine crane kind of dug into the ground here. If you can even see that. And then just a massive crater there. So, I'd end up sticking the jack under that, lifting it up with the, with the breaker bar, then getting the jack under there to get that wheel back up and then pull it all out. Ended up dinting the headlight. Just there, a little bit annoying. And scratching the shit out of the back of this with the back of the box. But it's out. So now I'll put it on the ground, start stripping stuff off it to get onto that journey. And then I want to do plenty of stuff to this bay. I killed an engine mount getting it out, which is a little bit annoying. But it may have been dead before I started yanking. And then I'd like to pull out this little high cast system that it's got here and put a non high cast power steering pump on it because it's got a high cast one on there. Which is disgusting. But yes. Alright. I don't know how much more I'm going to do tonight. Might call it a night. I'll either see you guys shortly or I'll see you in the morning. Alright, well I'm back. I was going to head inside but I was like, nah, I want to see what clutch is on it. See if I need to order something. The clutch is pretty dead. It's had some heat in it at some stage. Get the torch. Here goes a flywheel. But yeah, it's got some hot spots on there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the flywheel because apparently it's hard to get anything machined here in Japan, so not sure. I also am at a standstill because I have no multi-hex 14mm socket. It's another tool I need to buy. Um, but yeah, stoked with the progress. Uh, I am actually gonna go inside. Wash my hands, have a bath slash shower. For those who are not aware of my hot water situation. My hot water system doesn't work, so I have to fill the bath up with cold water, then stick this water heater in there and heat it up hours before I want to have a bath. And then I've got a submergible pump that I stick in the bottom of it that makes it a shower. It's mint. All right, let's go to sleep. See you in the morning. Good morning, back at it. So mulling over in my sleep slash not sleep, trying to go to sleep last night, I realized that for me to put this back in the car today, I'm gonna to need an engine mount because this one's dead. Um, so yeah, I've ordered one from Up Garage, which is good. They had a second hand one, it was $3. 
but that's not going to arrive today or possibly tomorrow or the next day and I don't really want to wait that long so I've put a message out to a couple of people to see if they might have one that they can sell me or that I can replace with the one that's coming. Alternatively, it's not that hard to put an engine mount back in the car so I might sit it back down into the car and get everything running with that engine cooked engine mount in there even though it is fully snapped in half. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do there, so, um, yeah. So I'm about to start pulling the cold side and hot side off, putting the, obviously I've got to put the turbo side on, I've got to put the power steering pump on, the air con compressor on, then I need to put the coil packs in, the cold side on, the um, alternator on, and then also put that starter motor on as well as changing the clutch fan and all the belts. So I've got a fair bit to do before we can start putting it back on the car, or well, back in the car. Still got to take the flywheel off, totally just went out for breakfast and forgot to buy a multi-hex 14mm socket, so it's a bit annoying. Got to go back out and do that. And then I also need to see if the other motor has a manual spigot bush in it, which it does not it's still got an automatic spigot bush in it so i'm gonna have to drill that and get that out and then put a manual spigot bearing in it which i don't have more things i need to order it's starting to more so look like this isn't going back in today all right start changing shit over all right so i'm currently on my way to juntendo to pick up a 14 mil multi-hex socket I could have done everything else on the motor before this, but it's the way my brain works, so I'm just like, I don't have this tool. I need to go get it to get this done. Even though the flywheel doesn't need to go on. It's just the way my brain works, so... Yes. Go to Juntendo, get a 14mm multi-hex. Still haven't found an engine mount yet. Um, and haven't even looked for a spigot bush. But I might end up doing the old cheeky bread manoeuvre, smashing my spigot bush out and reusing that. Slightly dodgy, but it will work. The engine mount's what I need the most. All right, let's keep going. Okay, update. We have the 14 mil multi-hex. So I'm gonna take the flywheel off now, even though that's one of the last jobs I needed to do. And then I am going to swap everything over. I'm just going to continue this entire process. All right, keep it posted. Got the 14 mil socket. Actually, got a little rack of sockets. Got these yesterday. Got these today. 18 bucks, not bad. All multi hex, running from 10 to 19, and then those other ones go from 21 to 32. So got the flywheel off. Flywheel's over there. Got the turbo off. A little bit of a dog. Um, look how they block this water line off. What sausages? Let me turn the light on. Dodgy, but I did find out that it's got an S15 ball bearing turbo on it, which is sick. All right, well, I will keep going. Okay, just had a little bit of a mission with the exhaust manifold studs, but they're all in now, which is sick. Uh, this only came with one in the motor, which is good because when I pulled all those out, one of them was cooked, but I've got all them in there now. Now we can throw the turbo on. Okay. I've just come across something that may be a gigantic issue. This here is the oil pickup for the turbo. See, it's cracked. It's actually cracked like all the way around. So, yeah. No clue what I'm going to do there. If I can get a long enough threaded AN fitting, then I could like put the bolt all the way to the very back. But even then, it'd have to be like an ORB that's like tapered at the back so it like seats into the block. Because one that needs a copper washer to seal on the front is going to receive basically oil pressure all the way up to that copper seal and it's just gonna come out the side. So yeah. At this stage, I might need to either fill it with metal cement 
and run a sandwich plate from the turbo round um, to feed the turbo. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. Sick. Update. So I noticed the thread was a little bit cooked inside um, that fitting. So I was like having a little dig in there to try to clean the thread up before I tried to thread anything into it. And turns out this thing was glued back in there. <laughs> yeah, sick. That's not going to work. So yeah, I have no clue what I'm going to do now. I might need to just stick a whole bunch of metal putty in there. I'm not sure if that'll seal it. We'll see how we go.